Hello and welcome to the pre-recorded Sunday School airing October 3rd, 2021. Uh, this week we'll be going over John chapter 5, 28 through 37. Let us start with a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can come before you. I ask that you just bless this time that we come together. I ask that you just uh, let your word penetrate into our hearts and minds and help us to further your gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, just to recap a little bit here, um, Jesus is now in the middle of a lesson for all to hear, and it was all triggered by the healing of the lame man at, at the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. John was very careful to lead us to this point so that we can see a climax coming for Jesus's ministry. John wrote in chapter one who Jesus really is, but quickly brings us through the story of obscurity to this now famous miracle worker who will be thrust into the limelight of notoriety. By the end of this fifth chapter, Jesus will be cast into an orbit that has only one place to go. And John has arranged for us to bear witness to this teaching for all of us. Before this point, Jesus was working miracles and doing some small group lessons. But after this encounter, Jesus will be stepping up his presence and the recognition he receives will leave no one in doubt as to who he really is. Uh, let's uh, share into the verses right now. Starting at verse 28 through 37. Uh, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, I can of mine own self do nothing, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye may ye might be saved. He was a burning and a, and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Strong confrontational words of Jesus to the Jewish leaders. Um, so let's get right into it. In verse 28, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear my voice. Very symbolic, I believe, in nature and also in reality. Um, the voice of God will know no bounds. Jesus will speak of those who were thought to be dead. Whether they were dead within living bodies or dead and buried, he will reach you with the truth of his gospel. Do not be surprised when hope conquers your fears and when a rescuer reaches out to you. You may have thought that everyone has given up on you, but Jesus is the ever-present hand that is offered today. I can personally attest to the power of hope in a hopeless existence. I was so boastful in my own mind, in my own sin, that I once thought that any church that I would step in would instantly catch fire or crumble to its foundations if I entered it. It was a foolish and prideful thought, but a necessary thought in my salvation. Nothing is too great for Jesus. Verse 29, and, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. God's message here is the one that sprouts from the garden itself. It has always been choice for mankind. We were living in the presence of God and receiving the truth continually in the garden. There was no falsehood or guile from God, yet we were willing to believe the lie from the devil. This mindset is still evident 
in all of society today. Jesus points out that the good done toward the gospel is a reward to us. There is an inner working to the kingdom, and it is fueled by the power of God. When we tap into that power, we are regenerated. And when we refuse to plug into that power, we are powerless to the results of our sin. What the Jewish leaders are hearing is the truth, but it will be their choice to believe the lie in spite of hearing the truth. A good table is set before them. And if they refuse to dine in the understanding of that truth, they will be left without good nourishment. The lie within themselves is that this is something not true. They are like the present day Marxists that will seek out the crime in any man in order to further their agenda. Stalin is quoted as to saying, show me the man and I will show you the crime. This is a reference to the fact that a person can be accused of anything if you put a crime forth under his name and convince everyone else of that lie. Verse 30, I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear. I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Jesus reveals the inner working of what is going on here. There is no personal agenda to his work done before them. He is merely the vessel that must carry this water until it is poured out. It is also a lesson to believers that walk around with the truth of the gospel, but use it incorrectly. It is God that judges the hearts of mankind, and it is the decisions of those individuals that condemn them before that pure law that judges immediately. It is not God's will to destroy a person, but it is the rejection of the truth that causes that destruction. Verse 31, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. A word to the wise, literally. The reasoning of men is foolishness before an all-knowing God. We can arrogantly go to our graves with our limited knowledge and be condemned, or we can listen to a miracle worker, loving, kind, rescuer that we have in Jesus. <clears throat> it is simple to believe Jesus because he has the wake of miracles behind him. These things and more support and witness before and after him that he is sent by God. If he was simply just saying these things without the evidence, he would have no support for the ministry. And now in verse 32, there is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. The truth is the truth because the originator of the truth is with me. How can I do any of these things if the truth was not with me? No one has done any of these things beforehand because the truth was not with them. It is pure, observable science that Jesus presents to them. Ask the witnesses to the miracles. Talk to those who had been healed. Seek the scriptures that foretold of these things and see if anything is contrary. Exercise all manner of investigation to see if it does not witness to what I present to you. The court of the mind is much different than the court of the heart. A person can be deceived in their heart because their heart can be bent towards something that may be evidently damaging to its surroundings, but the desire for that thing can overrule the mind. Consider the process of falling in love. Two people meet and their feelings are overwhelming with the attraction they feel toward one another. These feelings are useful in the introductory process of finding a mate, but these feelings in the absence of mindfulness is a recipe for problems. The desire for one another blinds them to the truth. The mind will ask reasonable questions. How will we support one another? How will we, we raise our children? 
Where will we live? Do we earn enough money to survive? What work will we do? Can we actively accept the faults that will ultimately surface? And so much more. Jesus knows they want to kill him, and they will not outwardly say it to him or anyone else. This thought overrules their reasoning. Now in verse 33, ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Way back in chapter 1, John wrote about John the Baptist and how the Sadducees had inquired unto him as to who he was and pressed him to speak so that they could go back with a report. John the Baptist was given a list of things that he ultimately denied being. The Jews being confounded had to finally ask, who are you then? John gave them an answer which was unsatisfying to them because his actions didn't fit their prescribed prejudices. John basically laid it out for them that they will not recognize the Christ that the one they seek is among them now and will be rising soon upon a testimony he is giving. John basically explains to them that he is preparing the way for this great man. And verse 34, continuing from there, but I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. Jesus is now telling them that no man can testify to where he came from because they were not there to see where he came from. The baptizer could only testify to what he was given and to what he was told to do. He could not tell of where the great man came from, but only do his best to make people ready for the truth that he, the Christ, was going to reveal to them. The words coming from Jesus uh, are words of salvation. They are meant to tap into the parts of people that had been starved of what God is to them. He is giving a hope that they had never dreamed of and a desire for a truth that always existed but was covered up in tradition, law, and oppression. Jesus will unravel, unfold, and shine a light on the true meaning that he always that he has always been there. Now in verse 35, he was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. This is in reference to John the Baptist, of course. Jesus pays a homage to his predecessor and calls him a light, and not just any light, but a light that burns. John the Baptist had sparked something in people that was necessary for Jesus to embark on his ministry. John was like that excited close friend of the bridegroom that loved him so much and had such great joy in expectation of the coming matrimony. It was all absorbing and all energy went into it. His sole desire was to see the, his betrothal to the bride so that life may abound in them. All were excited with John the Baptist and felt his energy and expectation and his witness in baptism. All who came out with a bent heart heard the words and wanted the same to be true. Now in verse 36, but I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Jesus now brings it back to what is going on now. You, the people, were excited to hear the word of John because of his witness of what is to come. Now I am here and show you a greater witness through these miracles and teachings of truthful scriptural interpretation. These things that you are witnessing are not of me, but of the Father who does them so that you may hear what I have to say. How can we compare what Jesus is saying to these people now to what is happening today? Simply to understand what he is saying is that he is proven to be sent by God because he has the credentials. If you have a high school diploma, 
it bears witness to you and others that you had completed 12 years worth of education. A bachelor's degree bears witness to four years worth of a higher education and a doctorate shows an even greater degree of expertise in a certain field. Then publishing on your findings to help others further themselves bears even more witness to your accomplishments. Basically, you are bearing fruit through what, that, what you now know. Jesus has been with God. All that God has to teach is within him. And now he has this exercise teaching, bearing evidence on earth to who he is and who has sent him. Verse 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Jesus finishes the description of who he is and willingly offers them some insight into, this, into their shortcomings. You know you are in a losing argument when the evidence is mounting against you in truths that cannot be denied. There is no argument against Jesus because the witness he has is from God, and he is the only one who has access to God at this point. And they have no proof of access to God. The proof that Jesus gives are the miracles that cannot be denied. Now he puts the slap down on their mindset, which is to be against him. To be against Jesus is to be against God because God is bearing witness to that Jesus is sent by him, the one I am. Next week, we'll hear the condemnation of those that deny the Christ his due honor. And that will wrap it up today. This is uh, Matthew chapter 5, 28 through 37. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Please like, share, comment, um, and hit the subscribe button so you know the next time that these uh, videos come, come to act your access. Uh, Lord, I thank you for this time. I ask you that you just bless the people who have just heard this, Lord. I ask that you just uh, give them the strength and the courage to move your gospel within uh, outside of all their comfort zones, Lord. Let us just use it in our lives to grow our, ourselves, our spirit, and our in our minds, Lord, to always have a curiosity for you and a hunger to save others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for attending. I ask that you just, uh, again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and you'll be up to date. God bless. Love you all.